designing a cool texture or design on the exterior of the cup, usually I tell my students to try to keep the uh, rim of the cup smooth, usually around a half an inch down, maybe three-eighths to of an inch to a half an inch down. When you put your mouth on the rim of the cup, if you have a significant um, texture up there, it feels quite awkward. So we try to keep that area uh, just perfectly smooth and clean. Now this cup still isn't perfectly smooth and clean. I'm going to do a few more things with it um, toward the end, but I do have my handle attached. I did that a few days ago. And uh, now I'm just going to lightly lay out the design that I'm thinking of doing. And here I'm actually doing some uh, patterns, some geometric like blocks that I'm going to be putting in this. You can certainly do uh, anything. I was just trying to come up with some ideas for uh, mine today. When I'm laying out these designs, I'm doing it lightly enough that if I need to, I can always go in there and uh, add a little water and rib over it to get rid of any texture. Okay, it's probably very difficult for you to see, but I've very lightly laid out these lines. Um, you can use a needle tool, a pencil, whatever you want, but again, you do it lightly, so if you make a mistake, you can then rib over it, sometimes adding a little water. Now, if I'm going to carve, say like a design like something like this, my favorite tools are, as I've mentioned before, the these uh, Kemper mini ribbon tools. Uh, Kemper also has some really nice uh, wooden tools. Um, I don't have as many of these in my classroom for my kids. Uh, we have more of these. So you can use uh, any sort of a, a carving tool that you prefer. Um, I'm just going to kind of outline my areas and then I'll be uh, cleaning up and doing a little bit more texture. So I'm going to do this and just kind of go through it at a faster speed for you. I did get a piece of foam rubber so I could set this on it. Okay, now that I have my patterning done, I'm ready to do the last little bit of cleaning that needs to be done on this. I'm going to do a little bit of cleaning, say with uh, the uh, inside where it might be a little bit scratchy. I'm going to use a paintbrush with water, and these are one of the clay brushes 
that I keep in the tool bins. Um, you don't want to use a sponge if you are using clay like we're using. We are using a grogged stoneware. If you use a sponge, you will remove the tiny particles of clay and leave behind the big particles of clay, which would be the grog. And then you would have a nasty, gritty surface. In the case of a paintbrush, though, I'm going back and forth over it, creating slip. And this slip is going in there and just smoothing out any of the areas that might be, say, a little bit groggy from earlier. Also, you could use, say, something like a, a rounded um, a handle of a brush. That can help compress if you need to compress something. Okay, so the inside, I know it's really difficult for you to see, but the inside looks really clean now. And then lastly, I am going to use some slip on the rim. I'm going to dip my fingers in water and just compress over that. By taking your fingers and really pressing, it makes a really nice smooth surface and it's pressing the grog down as well. Okay, that looks pretty good. Also, on the bottom of the foot, I would do the same sort of thing. And again, the bottom of this foot was previously leveled, but I do want to make sure that the grog is pressed down. Okay. And lastly, if I wanted to, I could take a small paintbrush with some water, and this will go through. And if I have grog that's visible, or maybe errant tool marks, this will clean it up the rest of the way. And I hope that's helpful for you to see how you can go about doing the design, finishing it off uh, on the bottom, on the top, on the inside. Oh, and students, please don't forget to uh, write your initials, your identification, so, and then your bell. And if you want to, you could do, say, the year that you did it. That way you'll always remember. And if you have a little debris, just keep a little dry paintbrush on hand, and that will help to uh, just clean that out. So I'll just take a few more minutes and clean this. One of the key things about drying a mug is anything, to, anytime you have a handle or something that is uh, thin that could um, dry out faster, make sure you dry it slowly and evenly. So I tell my kids to put a bag across the top and wrap it around the handle so these two areas don't dry out the fastest. If you left it completely uncovered, this would probably dry out before everything else and you would start to get cracking. So slow, patient drying is the key.